Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're learning more about the service side of the steam fitting industry. So let's get started with Kurt Hedstrom from General Heating. Wow, Kurt, this is an impressive facility, and I'd expect nothing less out here at Epic, a major campus near Verona, Wisconsin. And, you know, I look behind here, and the equipment looks massive. What are we looking at right here? Right here, you're looking at utility building number one. This is what we call the master geothermal pump house. Okay, so this entire facility is being heated and cooled through geothermal? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so at home, I have a geothermal system. It works wonderfully in the winter months, and I'm even more impressed in the summertime because I expect to have a geothermal system for heating in our cold Wisconsin winters, yeah. but I never imagined how effective it was going to be in the summer months. Yes, uh, out here it works fantastic. We have a lot of computers that generate a lot of heat, so out here we are predominantly cooling most of the year, and the ground is a good absorber of that heat that we reject into it. Wow, and you know, we walked through here, there are all kinds of pumps running here. Yep. How much fluid is being circulated in a system Right like now, there's approximately, give or take, five million gallons of water flowing through this system right now. And as you see over here, there's a 450 horsepower, 10,000 gallon pumps. So as this campus continues to expand, looks like you've designed expansion in mind. Yeah, exactly. As Epic grows, we grow with it. So you can see here, we're already roughed in with some valves, waiting for the next pump to come in as they add more buildings to their campus. Okay, now you work with General Heating, you're a project manager, one of many out here at this campus. What is your role? My role is a jack of all trades. I look to help our sheet metal workers, our uh, steam fitters, and also our service technicians order by material. I help um, estimate the projects and then also help them coordinate labor needs. And obviously you have to have a vast knowledge of how this massive system operates yes. and on today's show what we want to do is learn more about the steam fitters role yep again you have several steam fitters working out here yes we have quite a few of them we have as many as 50 and right now i think we're in that 30-ish range well obviously kurt as i look around there's an incredible amount of piping some small some extremely large is that really the role of the steam fitters, not only from installation, but the ongoing operation of the system? They're a crucial piece to our game plan out here. They take care of installing the piping, but also maintaining the systems that you see here today. They are called night and day if there's an issue, and they're also used to troubleshoot problems. Seems to me you guys are pretty happy with what they selected out here. It's the operation exceeded expectations? Oh, most definitely. This is an unbelievable system that the customer can be proud of and all steam fitters can be proud of as well. Well, you know, I really appreciate you coming on today, giving us an overview of this massive geothermal system. What I want to do is learn more about the role of the steam fitters. So we're going to catch up with Sean right now to learn more about that. Thanks for the general yep. overview no here problem. on the geothermal You're system. You're welcome. Wow, Sean, I am just blown away by the magnitude here and the complexity. I mean, looking up here, I can't get over the size of the pipes. 36 inches, 48 inches. Is it challenging working with materials and components this large? Oh yeah, we've got to do a lot of rigging back at the shop. We're working on a big pipe like this. It's real challenging to get it rigged up in the air safely, try to get the positions of the welds proper. So a lot of the pipe we're seeing out here isn't actually fabricated here. It's fabricated back at a shop? Correct. A lot of this piping was fabricated at a shop, brought out here. Then we'll get it up in place and do the welding connections here. And as I've learned, a steam fitter's role is welding. I mean, that seems to me the most integral aspect of the trade. Yep, that's the majority of our work out here is doing the welded pipe, stainless, black pipe, all that kind of different stuff. So how'd you learn how to do all that? Through the union, going to school. Yeah. Uh, it's a five-year apprenticeship, a lot of welding. How long have you been a steam fitter? 
17 years. Are you happy with your career choice so far? Oh yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, how long have you been out at this campus? I've been at Epic for 10 years now. You know, I gotta ask you, did you ever think you'd be working in a facility like this and it would be this intense? No, actually it was kind of nice. It's one of the biggest facilities I've ever been into and you know, started out smaller stuff, work way into here and nice surprise. Okay, so let's get into some of the components here. Like, what are we looking at right here? Uh, this would be a pump for the hot water filter system here. Taking some of the water, pushing it through this filter housing. It's got the cartridge filters in there. Uh, behind it, we have a chilled water one, same thing, just two different systems. And again, this is just one plant on the campus. There's several of these type structures throughout? Correct. This is one plant uh, that does part of the campus. So everything has to be intertwined. Everything operates at peak efficiency. How is it all controlled? Through our automation system, which we have a screen on the wall here that's got our graphics on there from our BAS system. Okay, so are we looking at this room that we're in right now? Yes, this will be the plant right here. We've got three dedicated heat recovery chillers, two magnetic chillers, secondary primary loops that are being displayed. I can go and click on a box here, to what I want to look at. So I'll click on the hot water, chilled water loop. So here it shows our hot and chilled water loops, our geothermal system side of it. Right here, this chill is running. We've got chilled water being produced. And sometimes you can reject it to the geo, or in this case, we need heating right now, it's winter time. We're actually dumping that extra heat into our hot water system, getting free heating out of it. Wow, you know, I look at this. This gives a great graphic example of all the map all the IT that's required in a steam fitter field. A lot of us don't think of a steam fitter as knowing all this or understanding it all. Yeah, kind was of that enlightening trains. to you when you came in? I mean, uh, I mean, did you ever expect to need this much math? No, I didn't know I had to do that much math for you know piping and uh, using computers, doing f formulas, figuring out equations. Never imagined I had to do any of that. Probably good advice for someone looking to get into this field. Uh, do your homework. Do your homework. Uh, stay sharp on math and computers. Now you used the term chiller. What exactly does a chiller do in a geothermal system? It'll create chilled water I'm using compressor. We use our geothermal to reject the heat from the compressor that's created out of there. These chillers over here will do heating and cooling. This one here is strictly cooling. So you got two different, totally different kinds of chillers. You know, it almost looks space age here. I mean, like a, something out of Star Wars to me. Oh yeah, lots of colors, labels of different colors, kind of throws that off a bit. Okay, so up here we got a box that's actually red, which means we have some sort of alarm going on. I will click on that. And over here, we have a hot water pump six in failure. Okay, it's flashing up there. Failure usually doesn't mean anything good. No, not usually. Uh, today we're actually doing some maintenance, so it's not a terrible thing. Oh, so it's not really anything wrong with the system. They're just nope. doing some ongoing maintenance? We're doing maintenance. Well, let's go over there and see exactly what they're up to. Okay. So what Scott and Harley are doing over here is a pump alignment using our laser alignment tool. <laughs> laser alignment. Have you seen the industry change much? Oh yeah, when I started out we were using like a straight edge or a dial indicator kind of going around. Now we've got lasers that you can get down you know, the thousandths of an inch. Wow, that is amazing. But I would think you would need it to operate a system like this at its peak efficiency, get the maximum longevity out of it. You have to be a cutting edge industry. Correct. The nice thing about this tool that we had to learn about was you can actually take the information out of this, plug it to computer, and then you can send all that information on a spreadsheet and we can give it to the owner saying, hey, here's what your pumps are, what we lined them on, you know, we're spot on. And that creates peace of mind for the owner knowing they made the right choice, have the right professionals installing it. Now, how much experience do these guys have? Harley has 15 years. Scott came with us about a year ago. Kind of a career change. Great, so Scott's an apprentice here? Yes. So you're never too old to get into it. You don't have to be an 18 year old coming out of high school to get into the trades. I mean, I bet if you have a great work ethic like Scott, you're welcome in any trade. Oh yeah, anybody's welcome. Okay, so you said this is a pump. What is this a pump for? This is one of the hot water pumps. Uh, we've got three hot water and three chilled water pumps right now. Uh, above you, we actually have future taps for when the campus grows, we can add on with it. Same with over here, we've got our conduits coming out of the ground for future chillers. Well, obviously you wanna have the right professionals operating it, but it seems to me it starts with good planning and design, the right tradesmen and women to install it properly, and a good vision for the future. I mean, all this cutting edge equipment just makes for not only better results for the company, but for our communities as a whole. You know, I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to give us a little taste of what steam fitters are up to. Anytime.
Well, Brad, what a great fabrication shop, and it looks like the guys are pretty busy. Well, thanks, Stu. We are. Uh, we've got a lot of projects going on right now. A lot of guys out here fabricating pipe that's going to be installed in our facilities. Now, what is this down here? I mean, this is a different color combination than I'm used to seeing. Stu, this is polypropylene pipe. Relatively new to the States. It's a piping system that's much lighter than steel. We like it because of its handling as well as some of the different technologies that we're implementing with this type pipe. Where would you use polypropylene? Uh, we use polypropylene anywhere where you would use potentially steel pipe and or copper pipe as well. Really? So maybe this might be a snow melt application or something like that? This could. This happens to be uh, an application with several uh, headers on it that will be feeding a snow melt system. Sure, and Lord knows in our neck of the woods we have a lot of need for that. And again, as I look around here, are these all steam fitters working in your facility? They are, Stu. Everybody in here is a member of Local 601 from uh, foreman journeyman down to apprentice level. Yeah, and as I understand it, the future's looking bright for that career choice amongst all the different trades out there. And before we get into that, I wanted to tell you, you know, we had a chance to visit the Epic Complex out near Verona and talk to one of your steam fitters, and I was blown away by the geothermal system that was out there, and they let me know that it was actually prefabbed out in a shop here. It was. A lot of the pipe assemblies that you saw out at Epic were built in this shop here. We build as much as we can in our facilities here prior to shipping it out to our sites to be installed. Does that make it more efficient when you're talking about the cost of construction out there? It does. It makes it a lot more efficient. You can see we're in climate-controlled environment. The folks are working on stands and at the correct height for them to work efficiently. You've got all kinds of different stations where we've set them up specifically to do a certain task. Sure. And so when they're doing a specific task, i got to believe you get a better end product because that's what you're focused on, doing the best possible job you can on that. We are. Uh, productivity along with quality every step of the way. Sure. And you know, the fabrication on the construction end of things always blows my mind. But what I was surprised to hear is the demand is so high on the service side of the steam fitter industry. There is an incredible demand right now on the service side. We can use technicians. We're always in need of good quality help. Those folks are out there taking care of all the equipment and the systems that we install. Every customer that we have is very appreciative of the fact that our service guys take care of them. Well, you know, on today's show, we've been following along the service side of things on the steam fitter, in this case, 601. To give the viewer an opportunity to see behind the scenes and what this trade involves, do you have any advice for someone who we might have piqued their interest here and, hey, I want to become a steam fitter? I mean, what would be the best advice you could give to somebody? You know, if, if you want to work hard and you want to have a great career, you want to have an education that's paid for, we're always looking for great quality people. Well, that's great advice. Hopefully we can get more young adults into the industry. Right now I'm going to catch up with Jeff from the Mechanical Contractors Association. I want to learn more about their role in the community, but I thank you for coming on today's show. Thank you, Stu. Jeff, what a great shop out here. Just talking to Brad. He's talking about all the skilled professionals here. And look at right in the background there. Steam fitter in action. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, you bet. Now, you're with the Mechanical Contractors Association. What exactly is that? Sure. The Mechanical Contractors Association represent all the contractors in Madison that hire the 601 members. Okay. And so it's more than just the steam fitters. But on today's show, we're specifically focusing in on 601 right. and their workers, and not only in the construction side, but as I mentioned to Brad, I was impressed with the service side and the demand that's out there. And you know, one thing I never asked him was, how does he ramp up? We talk about, you know, when things are going good, he needs more workers, but where do they come from? I mean, who does he contact? Sure, that's one of the key components in our relationship with Local 601. We can hire guys on an individual basis for any project. So I know you guys wrote at Epic earlier, and boy, we really needed to hire up guys there quick and, and fast. We can get certified employees, know the trade, know the industry, know the individual projects right from 601. Then when they slow down, maybe another shop is picking up, and those guys can go right over there and start working for that individual location. It seems to me it's analogous to a free agent out there. I mean, you can come in, work for a team. I mean, that's what I'd consider these guys, it's sure. part of a team, but then as it slows down a bit, hey, they might not be out of work for very long. They can go to another team or another company in the area and have a great employment opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, with work the way it is, that's a great system to have for us. I mean, we thrive on that and really we wouldn't be able to do what we can do without that relationship. And, you know, I'm fortunate in my line of work. I get to meet all these great individuals. They take great pride in their work, but not only in their work, but being members of their communities. 
Yeah, we see that too. One of the great events that we've been doing is our Heats On event, coming up on our 29th year. And we partnered with the Veterans Association. We go out to veterans' homes, check over their furnaces. We do it every October, and we go through the entire furnace, see what things need to be replaced. Actually, some of them we've had to replace the entire furnace. Really a great relationship. Oh, I bet these guys just love giving back to the community, especially to veterans when you think about how much of their lives they give to us. The stories we hear when the guys come back, is it's really emotional for a lot of them. Guys are doing it year after year. We've got some guys that have done it for 20 years. They just love the relationship, love to see how they can help give back. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Keep up the good work, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Are you ready for a career choice that rewards you for your hard work, compensates you for your knowledge and willingness to learn, pays you more money, provides better benefits, and offers a comfortable retirement? Then contact your local Steamfitter 601 Training Center and attend our next trade orientation. You'll learn about our complete five-year apprenticeship program that's designed to help you progress from the basic on-the-job skills to the top of the welding and HVACR service industry. You also don't need a big down payment to start your steam fitter training. Just a good work ethic that includes showing up on time, working hard, and working smart. And better yet, you're well paid through your apprenticeship, and you earn more as you learn more. So make a career choice that's full of rewards and contact Steamfitters Local 601 today for more information. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith, and so far in today's show, we've been learning more about the service side of the steam fitting industry. Now let's catch up with steam fitter instructor, Neil Manny. And these are typical pieces of the equipment that you're going to see installed in a lot of commercial buildings, especially light commercial, everything up to even heavier commercial. They're very efficient units. In fact, most of your geothermal loops that are being installed in grounds, this is a typical terminal unit that would run off the geothermal loop. Yeah, we had an opportunity earlier in the show to catch up with a couple of steam fitters out at Epic, and boy, that geothermal system was incredible out there. And that was on a grand scale, but it really runs a gambit. I mean, I have geothermal in my house, so a home unit all the way up to something as magnificent as that, and they all work very efficiently if they're installed properly. As a matter of fact, Epic uses a tremendous number of units almost identical to this for heating and cooling in the, in the entire campus, really. Some of them obviously much larger than this, almost on the scale of a chiller. Some of them smaller like this for maybe individual information technology rooms, computer rooms, things like that. Sure. Well, you know, the last time I ran into you, you were fresh off of winning a national competition in <laughs> steam fitting, as a matter of fact. That is true. Uh, it was a HVAC service. That was the segment I competed in, and I took it all the way to the international level. And I think a lot of it I owe to, you know, a lot of the training I got here, right here in, in this building, uh, MATC in Milwaukee, the instructors I had, who were always willing to answer any of the questions I had, especially some of the more in-depth troubleshooting questions, because if I didn't understand something and I wanted an answer to it, I went to my instructors and I went to the journeyman I worked with in the field. Sure, well that speaks volumes to the trades in general, the willingness to pass on knowledge, and from your standpoint or any steam fitter, wanting to go beyond, above and beyond in their career. And so you had an opportunity, you performed very well, and as I understand it, now you've gone one step further and now you're an instructor. I was given the opportunity. Uh, one of our training coordinators contacted me and asked if I'd be willing to teach a course, and I consider that a, you know, one step toward a transition to one day becoming a full-time instructor. 
And that is what I love about the trades, especially with what's going on now in our state where they're looking for more mentorship and passing on that knowledge. That's what you guys are trying to do, right? In fact, the class I am teaching right now, and I'm only teaching one class at the moment, but it's called Transition to Trainer. It's a state-required class where every trade has to take it regardless of what it is, but it gives the apprentices the skills they need as they near the end of their apprenticeship to go out and become competent trainers not just able to go out and perform the work, but to be able to better pass the skills that they have onto the younger generation as they come up. And when you talk about journey workers passing on their knowledge, I gotta believe some of those guys can, you know, perform the best welds, the best brazing, but maybe they're not the best communicators if they haven't had a course like that, and that's what you're trying to do is to glean that knowledge and give them a, the ability to pass that on to the younger generation? That's really what it is. There's guys that can weld with their eyes closed, but they're not very good at verbally communicating what exactly it is they're doing. And this isn't a course that's designed to give them every single thing they need. It's to help them better prepare to be able to pass those skills along. And if it's not right and you need to correct them, if you need to give feedback, how to give good, critical, positive feedback even if it's something they're not doing right, how can you teach them how to do it right without hurting their feelings and say, hey, you screwed up? Well, as you mentioned, you're not just an instructor. You're also out here working within our community. What is the general feel out there? Is there a demand on the service side of the steam fitting industry? There's a big demand on the service side. Most of the contractors I am aware of, especially when summertime rolls around, they're all looking for a skilled mechanic. They all have a spot for at least one. Well, there's not a lot of skilled mechanics out there right now. So what we need to do is we need to get these guys into the trade and do a good job of training them. They become skilled mechanics and the contractors reap the benefits. It really begins with apprenticeship then? It does. And so that's what we wanna do and we're trying to get the word out there. And what a great way to create a career, to follow a career path into so many different avenues, but it all begins at the apprenticeship level. That is true. If you like to take things apart and figure out how they work and like fixing things, it's a great career because you can go any direction you want to and there's all assortment of work. Well, I hope that there's lots more guys like you wanting to pass on their knowledge. I appreciate you, Neil, coming on today's show. All right, not a problem, thank you. Well, Joel, here we are down in the basement of the Madison Center, and obviously a lot of welding booths here. I just marvel at how much welding is done in the steam fitting trade. And then I was equally impressed to learn about the demand from Neil talking about the service side of the steam fitting industry. Every building that you see being built in the past few years all around the state, every one of them has got a heating system, an air conditioning system, temperature controls, energy management, that's all steam fitter work. That's all the things that we service. And when you see all these buildings there, along with that, they need to be maintained. Sometimes they need to be added on to. Steam fitters are needed, so is there much of a demand there, as Neil is talking about? Tremendous demand. I'll tell you this, last summer we could have easily used another 20 to 25 service people. Wow. We were that short. And you know, I love visiting a facility like this. You know, I look around, look in the booths, and I think of the history that's here and all the different skilled personnel that have been trained here. And that's one of the things I just love about the trades is the mentorship, the passing of the knowledge from the journey workers down to the apprentice, and that never-ending cycle there that works great because book smart's one thing, but real-world experience is something else. So I got to believe in a facility like this, there is a lot of history. Well, I can tell you this building was started in 1957, the original site of it. This weld shop was added on in the late 80s and early 90s. And this apprenticeship system that we have is just fantastic. It's, as you mentioned, passing along of knowledge from one generation to the next. And that said, it is a little cramped here, a little cramped quarters. I mean, great instructors are able to work in cramped quarters, still get the message across. But as I understand it, you have some exciting news in the Madison area. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, the membership is going to be investing in itself. Uh, we are, as you can see, getting packed to the gills here, and we are going to open up a facility five times as large as this building is right now. It's going to be a major investment by the membership, but it's going to be for all the training on welding, HVAC service, 
anything you can think of that a steam fitter touches. And that's in the Madison area here? Madison area, correct. And you touched on something there that I don't know if people realize. All on the membership. There's no public funding going to this large training complex. They're taking it upon themselves to fund the construction of that? That's correct. It's, it's the men and women of the membership that have put the money in over the years. People that are retired right now started that system, and we thank them for that. But uh, we're going to go on and continue to train. Well, Joel, that's exciting news for sure, and that's due to break ground in June, as I understand it. Yes. So hopefully we can get some more young adults into the steam fitting industry. And if I am a young adult out there looking to become a steam fitter, how do I get more info? Well, easiest ways to is to go on our website, and it'll tell you exactly what to do and where to be. But I can tell you that out here in Madison, we do a trade orientation the fourth Wednesday of every month, 3 o'clock. All that is required is have a driver's license and a high school diploma. Well, Joel, I really appreciate coming on today's show, shedding some light on the steam fitting industry. Thanks, Stu. It's been my pleasure. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.